Hello everyone. Am I live? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Uh, let me confirm if I'm clearly visible, audible, I will start the lecture ahead. Give me a minute. Okay. I can't see it live yet. If you can see it live, please give me a thumbs up in the chat box. Please someone. Okay, I hope it is working. Yes, yes, it is working. So I, I guess it is visible. Okay, so I welcome you all for today's session. A very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to take an ultra rapid fast revision of entire systemic pathology. So daily for two hours, I will take one one system from the systemic pathology and complete that system, the important topics of that system from NEET PG, FMG and INICT point of view. So it is the competitive exam point of view. I'm giving you the ultra fast rapid revision of systemic pathology. So today's system is cardiovascular system. Are you people there? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Can I start cardiovascular system? Can I start cardiovascular system? So I am starting cardiovascular system. Is it stuck? So why you are saying it is stuck? I can see it is going smooth, I guess. Shivam Gupta, is it stuck? I don't think it is stuck. Okay. So fine. Okay, got it, got it. So I'm starting cardiovascular system. So from competitive exam point of view, there are three, four important topics that you should know in cardiovascular system. By cardiovascular system, I mean heart as well as blood vessel, both. I'm considering both. So what important topics you cannot afford missing for entering in any competitive exam, especially NEAT PG. The first is endocarditis. The four types of endocarditis that I'm going to teach you now. So rheumatic heart disease, Libman sec endocarditis, infective endocarditis, and non uh, non thrombotic bacterial endocarditis. Non thrombone thumbs up from everyone. Let me start with endocarditis. Itis. Itis in pathology is inflammation. Endocarditis. Endocarditis. We know heart is made up of this is heart. See, this is a simplified diagram of the heart. You can see the four chambers in the heart, right? You can see the four chambers in the heart. You can see the three layers of the heart. Endocardium, myocardium, pericardium. These are the three layers in the heart. Endocardium, the red one, the innermost layer. Myocardium, the black one, the middle layer. And blue one, the pericardium, the outermost layer. Now I am teaching you endocarditis. Endocarditis is inflammation of the inner layer, right? So inflammation of the inner layer is known as endocardium. Can you see the balls, heart balls? Can you see the heart balls? These are the two heart balls. Let me see if I am clearly visible audible this time. I will start it ahead. Give me a minute. There is some problem, some technical issue going on. Okay. I guess it will be visible now. Okay. I guess it will work right now. I guess. So I have restarted it and let me see. So I was teaching you endocarditis, right? You know the three layers of the heart, the endocardium, the myocardium and the pericardium. The three layers of the heart is endocardium, myocardium and pericardium. Uh, on the balls, there is valvular endocardium and remaining of the heart, there is mural endocardium. You can see the two types of the endocardium. So I am teaching you endocarditis. Endocarditis is the inflammation of the heart. Now inflammation will occur in valvular endocardium as well as inflammation it will occur in mural endocardium. So there are two types of endocarditis you can see. Just a second. The valvular endocarditis and the mural endocarditis. Valvular and mural. The two type of endocarditis I guess you can see here, right? So let me teach you the classification of endocarditis. These four endocarditis you have to study in detail. The first one is the rheumatic. The second is Libman sac. The third is non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. And the fourth one is bacterial or infective. You have to learn the four types of endocarditis and all of them the endocardium of the heart will be involved. Right. So the vegetations will be formed in the heart. You can see the vegetations in all four. In the walls, the vegetations will be formed. But the morphology of the vegetation, the gross, the microscopy, the appearance will be different in the four types of endocarditis. Let me start with the first one, rheumatic fever. Now, is there is any difference in rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease? Does anyone know? Is there is any difference in rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease? Yes. Does anyone know the difference between rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease? Okay. Rheumatic fever is an umbrella term which contains five diseases under them and rheumatic heart disease is one of them. Let me tell you a story, a beautiful story of the rheumatic fever. Okay. Can you see a child? Rheumatic fever occurs in child. So, it is a child. 3 to 15 years of age, 5 to 15 years of age, it is a child. So, in the child, there is tonsillitis. Can you see these are the tonsils? tonsils of the child tonsillitis or pharyngitis it is very common in child to have tonsillitis or pharyngitis right so because of 
tonsillitis or pharyngitis occurring in the child by a bacteria. The name of the bacteria is GAP. That is group A beta streptococcus. Group A beta streptococcus bacteria. So this is the bacteria which is entering. Most common bacteria which causes tonsillitis or pharyngitis in a child. You will say, ma'am, it is very common in the child to have you. You, when you were a child, I was a child, we are also having tonsillitis or pharyngitis. It's okay. So when bacteria enters in the tonsil, body is forming antibodies against it. Can you see? These are the antibodies. So the body, the human body is forming, the child body is forming antibodies against the bacteria. These antibodies will stick with the bacteria, form antigen antibody complexes and kill the bacteria. So you will say, ma'am, what is the problem then? The problem is not the bacteria. The problem is not the bacteria. The problem is the antibodies. Actually, there is an antigen present on the surface of the bacteria. The similar antigen present on human five organs. The first organ is the heart. Can you see this, this antigen? The brain, this antigen. The skin, this antigen. The subcutaneous tissue, this is the antigen. And joints, this is the antigen. The name of this antigen is M protein. M protein related to the M protein. So M protein is present in the bacteria also. And the same M protein related, not exactly same, but related M protein is present on human five organs. So the antibodies which are formed, they will get confused. These antibodies think that this is also bacteria. This is an antigen of bacteria. So these antibodies will come and can you see these antibodies are sticking, forming antigen antibody complexes in the five organs. So these five organs have five diseases. These five organs have five diseases. Okay. In the heart, we will have rheumatic heart disease. Okay. In the brain, we will have chorea, syndrome's chorea. In the skin, we have erythema marginatum erythema marginatum. In the subcutaneous tissue, we have subcutaneous nodules. And then in the joints, we have migratory polyarthritis. How to learn the five organs? How I learn? So the two vital organs, the brain and the heart. So one is heart, one is brain, one is skin. Can you see? This is the skin. Just below the skin, there is subcutaneous tissue. And just subcutaneous tissue below, we have joints. We have various joints. So three things, skin, uske niche subcutaneous tissue, uske niche joints. And the two vitals, heart and brain. No, you will never forget. No, you will never forget. Right. So these are the five diseases in each of them, the five organs. The, these five together known as rheumatic fever. So can I say rheumatic fever is the umbrella term in which five diseases are there. There are five diseases, five organ involvement. It is a multi-system disease in which five organs are involved. So rheumatic fever is the umbrella term. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Now I am visible, audible, I guess. Everyone give me a thumbs up, those who are listening to me. So rheumatic fever is the umbrella term under which five conditions occur. Right, that is rheumatic heart disease, syndrome, scoria, erythema marginatum, subcutaneous nodules and migratory polyarthritis. First, give me a thumbs up on this point. You got it, right. The second point which I want to tell you here, rheumatic fever is not due to bacteria. It is due to human antibody, autoantibodies. These antibodies are acting as autoantibodies. They are killing the bacteria, but they are forming antigen antibody complexes with human own organs. So they are killing the cells of human own body. So anti, so can I say rheumatic fever is the autoimmune disease? Yes, it is an autoimmune disease. The problem is the antibody, not the bacteria. I guess, I got, I guess everyone got it. So that is the summary. That is the summary of rheumatic fever. So I'm going to teach you rheumatic fever under these headings, right? So you got the summary. What is rheumatic fever? Now you yourself decide. What is rheumatic fever? You define. It is a multi-systemic disease involving five systems. It always occurs after post-streptococcal infection, without which it cannot occur. And it is non-suppurative. Bacteria is not causing it. Non-suppurative, non fuss non forming inflammatory disease. The five organs involved, you already know the name of the five organs. So this is the first definition. It is an acute immunologically mediated. It is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease in which multi-system involvement is there. So this disease occurs a few weeks after group A beta streptococcus pharyngitis and these are the five organs involved. What are the five organs involved? It is brain, it is heart, it is skin, it is subcutaneous tissue and it is joints. Give me a thumbs up. So pathogenesis, it is an autoimmune disease. It is not caused by bacteria. Please mind my words. It is not caused by bacteria. It is caused by autoantibodies of the human. Right. So there is a child. He is susceptible. He is having infection by gas bacteria. Group A streptococcus bacteria. Beta streptococcus bacteria. Body is forming antibodies against it. The antibodies are acting as autoantibodies. So they cross-react. They are cross-reacting with five uh, organs because there is epitope. The antigen is common between the bacteria and the five organs. So that is cross-reactivity. So the mechanism is known as molecular mimicry and cross-reactivity. Can you see? These are the autoantibodies. These are the autoantibodies. So the antigen is common. That is epitope. Epitope on the bacteria, the same epitope is present 
on the five organs. This is known as molecular mimicry. So the organs are doing mimicry of the bacteria and the antibodies are cross-reacting. So the pathogenesis in summary, it is decided as de de defined as molecular mimicry and cross-reactivity. Give me a thumbs up. Come on, give me a thumbs up. Molecular mimicry and cross-reactivity, you got this term. What do you mean by molecular mimicry? Who is doing the mimicry here? Who is doing the mimicry? Mimicry is done by the five organs, the epitope of the five organs, antigen on the five organs with the epitope of the bacteria. So that is the molecular mimicry. And who is doing cross-reactivity? The antibodies are doing the cross-reactivity. So that is the pathogenesis. Now, Jones is a scientist who has, who has described all this. So I will tell you Jones criteria. There are five Jones major criteria and five Jones minor criteria to define a patient as having rheumatic fever. So you are a doctor now any child coming to your clinic with the parents so what what five major and five minor things you will see in the child to label the child as having a rheumatic fever there are five major criteria five minor criteria let me yeah i will come on the revised jones also let me teach you first jones criteria dexter then i will tell you what is the change in revised zone i'm coming on that jones criteria may five major and five minor hai. five major kya hai? what are the five major jones criteria the five major are same five things which are the five diseases and five organs. So in the heart, it is rheumatic heart disease that is known as carditis. In the brain, it is syndamscoria. In the skin, it is erythema marginitum. In the subcutaneous tissue, it is subcutaneous nodules. And in the joints, it is polyarthritis, migratory polyarthritis, arthritis, inflammation of the joints. So these five, can you see these five, rheumatic heart disease, syndamscoria, erythema marginitum, subcutaneous nodules, and migratory polyarthritis. These five are the Jones five major criteria. So major criteria are same of the five diseases. There is no change. But let me come. So can you see the five major criteria? See the child. See the tonsils of the child. See the pus inside the tonsils. Right. So here bacteria are present. And bacteria ke against the antibodies formed, they are causing these five things together. So you can see the five things. It is. So there is a mnemonic. The mnemonic is Jones for the major criteria. O ko banado heart. Make a heart of the O. So what is the mnemonic? J for joints. That is polyarthritis in the joints, heart, O for heart, it is carditis in the heart, and for nodules, subcutaneous nodules, E for erythema marginitum, and S for syndamscoria. If you want a mnemonic, learn by mnemonic. If you don't want a mnemonic, learn itself. So that is the major criteria. Let me teach you minor criteria. Now, whenever the child have tonsillitis, this is tonsillitis, at the same time, the child will also have fever, no? because it is a bacterial infection. So fever is a minor criteria. Listen, fever is a minor criteria. Child have fever at that time. So fever is not a major criteria. Fever is a minor criteria. Right, number one. Now, in the joints, what is happening here? In the joints, it is arthritis, migratory polyarthritis. Listen, let me teach you two terms. Arthritis and arthralgia. Arthralgia. Let me teach you these two terms. Arthritis and arthralgia. What do you mean by that? Itis means inflammation. So it is inflammation of the joints. And algia means pain. It is pain in the joints. So the two terms differ pathologically. Right. Arthritis is a major criteria. Right. And arthralgia is a minor criteria. Now you will not get confused. Many, many, many questions, MCQs are based on this difference. Many students don't know this difference. So arthritis is always polyarthritis. It is in multiple joints. It is migratory polyarthritis. It is a major criteria, but arthralgia is a minor criteria. So second minor criteria is arthralgia. So fever, it is arthralgia, not arthritis. Number two. Number three, previous history of rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever tends to reoccur. So the previous history of rheumatic fever is again a minor criteria. In the lab, three things are elevated. ESR is elevated. WBC count is elevated. And CPR, C-reactive protein, CRP is elevated. So these three counts are elevated in the lab. It is one of the criteria. And if you do the ECG of the patient, because heart is always involved. ECG may walls of the heart are involved, right? Endocardium is involved. There are vegetations on the wall. So there is increased PR interval, you know, PQRST on ECG. So that is a minor criteria. Let me define the five major and five minor criteria in front of you. Many questions are there based on major and minor criteria. Who will help me in defining five major? Any one of you? One, two, three, four, five. And define five minor. Please tell me the five major and five minor criteria first. Any one of you, what are the five major criteria? Okay, tell me the name of the five organs. The first organ is heart. Second organ is brain. Third organ is skin. Just below the skin, it is subcutaneous tissue. 
and just below the subcutaneous tissue it is joints right tell me the name of five diseases here am i visible audible you you people are not responding that's why i'm asking if i'm visible audible you should respond i guess let me see yeah i'm visible audible you should respond yes dr priyanka you are right so what are the five in the heart is it is rheumatic heart disease or carditis in the brain it is syndam chorea chorea in the skin it is erythema marginatum in the subcutaneous tissue it is nodules in the subcutaneous tissue and in the joints it is arthritis not arthralgia arthritis polyarthritis migratory polyarthritis that is in joints come on minor criteria in minor criteria what are the five things number one is fever number one number two is arthralgia it is arthralgia not arthritis compare it is arthritis and arthralgia number three repeated history of rheumatic fever number four three things in the lab is elevated esr is raised crp is raised and total wbc count are raised and in ecg pr interval is raised pr interval is elevated so these are the five minor criteria i want thumbs up from everyone then only i will proceed so let me teach you the revised jones cry you can see here the five major and five minor minor so after that we have done the revision in 2016 we have done revision in jones criteria so what is the revision we have done okay imagine a patient in front of you you are a doctor now he is your patient he is a child he is a patient coming with the parents in your clinic he is having many of the major criteria out of these many of the minor criteria out of these but the mother is saying child was not having tonsillitis you are asking a leading question to the mother before happening all these does the child is having tonsillitis mother say i don't remember no he was not having so will you label the child as rheumatic fever without a history of tonsillitis no you cannot do that so tonsillitis or pharyngitis is a compulsory thing you have to prove that this all thing is happening because of the bacteria first the bacteria is coming and auto antibodies are doing it so you have to prove the presence of the bacteria in the body without that you cannot do so in revised jones criteria we have added an additional criteria the third is the guess criteria group a streptococcal infection criteria so there are same five major major five me there is no change the same five major criteria are there minor instead of five there are four the repeat history of rheumatic fever is removed so what are the five instead of five there are four minor now fever is still there arthralgia is still there ecg pe increase pr interval is still there and the three things in the lab is elevated esr crp and wbc it is still there but repeat history of rheumatic fever is removed in revised zone criteria okay so we have five major four minor and three additional guess criteria guess criteria are added so it is group a streptococcal infection you have to prove how you will prove how you will prove that this child is having bacterial infection and after that this all scenario is taking place so take the swab take the swab throat swab take a throat swab it is present in the tonsils and pharynx na so take a throat swab and do the culture if the bacteria is growing group a beta streptococcus bacteria is growing on the culture it is proven so number 1 throat swab throat swab ke kar kar ke culture kar lo number 1 number 2 take the blood of this this child take the blood sample and in the blood sample look for the antibodies the auto antibodies which you are talking about if antibodies are present against the bacteria which antibodies are present two types of antibodies anti streptolysin o antibodies aso t titer it is known as or anti dnas antibody any of the antibody will work so that will be proven that this child is having the entire major and minor criteria after streptococcal infection so you can label it as rheumatic fever if the major and minor criteria occurring de novo without without bacterial infection you cannot label it as rheumatic fever mind my words if this child is having major criteria and minor criteria without evidence of bacterial infection you cannot label it as rheumatic fever if you want to label it rheumatic fever the gas criteria has to be fulfilled so what is the summary the summary is that in revised jones criteria we have five major criteria right four minor criteria right four and three gas criteria group a beta streptococcus the full form of gas gas criteria three so that is revised jones criteria someone among you was asking about the revised is the concept clear to you is the concept clear to you i am coming on scent vitals vaseem give me minute give me a minute give me some time let me explain you all these criteria one by one 
Saint Vitus is the name of the patient in which first time syndans chorea was discovered. One of the major criteria is the brain syndans chorea. Syndans chorea was first time discovered in a patient. She was a girl, a baby girl, three four years girl, and she, the name of the girl was Saint Vitus. That's why it is known as Saint Vitus dance. I will come on that. Don't worry. Everything I will tell you, but let me teach you point by point. What are the five major criteria? One, two, three, four, five. What are the four minor criteria? One, two, three, four. And what are the three guess criteria? One, two, three. So five major, four minor, and three guess criteria. Who will tell me? Who will tell me? Tell me five major criteria. It is rheumatic heart disease in the heart, Sandham's chorea, or Saint Vitus dance. Which someone is asking, right? So that is the thing. The second criteria: brain, ho gaya, heart, ho gaya. The third is uh, erythema marginatum in the skin. The fourth is subcutaneous nodules, nodules in the subcutaneous tissue. The fifth is arthritis, arthritis, arthralgia, nahi. arthritis in the joints, polyarthritis. It is migratory polyarthritis. The minor criteria: what are the four minor criteria? Number one: fever. Patient have fever and arthralgia. Arthralgia, not arthritis. Mind my words. It is pain in the joint. Yahan pe inflammation tha. Yahan pe pain hai. Right. The third is three things are elevated. ESR, CRP, and WBC. And number fourth is ECG. ECG mein PR interval is elevated. Right. What are the guess criteria? What are the guess criteria? Three guess criteria. Do a throat swap. And in the throat swap, if you prove that on culture bacteria is present, it will be done. Or take the antibodies. The two type of antibodies from the blood. Either take anti-streptolysine O antibody, which is known as ASOT titer, or take anti-DNAs, anti-DNAs antibody. So these are the two names of the auto antibodies which are formed against the bacteria. Give me a thumbs up. I want thumbs up from everyone. So Shivam, Priyanka, Vaseem, everyone got it? Everyone got it? Yes or no? Uh, Narendran is asking, monoarthritis come under which category? Monoarthritis is an exception. We will not take monoarthritis in the criteria. There is a, a special group just may in few patients, not in India, but outside India, we found that in rheumatic fever, some of the child have monoarthritis also. So we consider them, but we will not say them in any of the criteria, right? Monoarthritis is none of the criteria, Narendran. Have you got it? I want thumbs up from everyone. Should I proceed? Should I proceed? Everyone means everyone. Okay. So these are the revised Jones criteria. Now, out of this, out of these revised, listen, the five major, the four minor and three guess. How many are pres present in your patient? So you should label them as the patient is rheumatic fever. Not all should be present in one patient. Out of the major, if two major are present, any two major in your patient, so label it as, along with guess. Guess to hona chahi, one of the guess. So if any two major along with guess criteria are present, label it as rheumatic fever label any two more than two it's good but minimum two should be present so carditis arthr arthritis syndrome chorea erythema marginatum or subcutaneous nodule may say at least two along with guess hona chahiye to label it as rheumatic fever if not two one is present then you will say ma'am if only one if only carditis is there then should i say along with guess guess is there so should i say that the patient is having rheumatic fever if one major is present then you should look for at least two minor so what is the criteria and the criteria is in front of you. So either say only two major are sufficient. If two major are there, at least, at least more than two are there, it's good. At least two major don't look for minor. Whether they are present or doesn't present doesn't matter, right? If one major is present, then look for minor. At least two minor should be there. Along with guess. Guess to hamesha hona hi hona chahiye. You should have a guess. You should have a guess criteria. Give me a thumbs up. So I am done. So I will teach you all five, one by one. Let me start with the first one, rheumatic heart disease. First, I will teach you rheumatic heart disease in detail. Then I will teach you syndans chorea, then erythema marginatum, then subcutaneous nodule, then migratory polyarthritis. These four are known as extra cardiac manifestations. In rheumatic fever, we have five manifestations. The one is cardiac and these four are extra cardiac. Cardiac is more important. Let me start with rheumatic heart disease, the cardiac manifestation of rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever mein paanch cheeze hain. One of them is rheumatic heart disease. Right? So, the cardiac manifestation. The point is that you will say ma'am it is endocarditis na? So, I will say yes. The innermost layer endocardium is involved but not only endocardium, the myocardium and pericardium is also involved. So, in rheumatic heart disease all three layers are inflamed. There is endocarditis, there is myocarditis, there is pericarditis. In short, there is pancarditis. Pan means all. All layers are inflamed. Pancarditis, that is the hallmark. So first learn it is a pancarditis. 
so you can see it is endocarditis myocarditis as well as pericarditis right so basically it is pancarditis everyone give me a thumbs up yes yes so it is pancarditis it is pancarditis right so what you are asking satish kumar we should study before studying robins we should study is it advanced english so while reading robins most of the topics we don't understand so satish kumar i should advise you please watch the lectures or the recordings of the lectures before going to the robins now my entire series is robins based so today give it a try satish kumar you are understanding endocarditis right now right so after watching my lecture today only read this topic from robins and please get me back whether you found the english of the robins difficult yes or no so i am giving you a bird's eye view so i will simplify the topic so after watching my lectures reading robins is like cake walk for you it will be like cake walk you will just flip the page i know this i know this i know this i got this i got this everything will be done so i have converted the entire robins in simplified version for you right so satish kumar this is answer for you and please do it today only and let me know and get me back right on this let me move ahead <coughs> my entire series is robins based robins is the bible of pathology so i want to recommend cotron uh, uh the uh, okay robins and cotron okay you are asking for the same book now robins and cotron only one book i will prefer for pathology that is robins and cotron let me move ahead so in uh, rheumatic heart disease you have pancarditis the all three layers are involved so you can see this is endocardium the thickest one is the myocardium and this is pericardium all three layers will be involved see a beautiful diagram can you see this is the pharyngitis of a child this is the child this is the pharynx can you see these are the bacteria the chains streptococcus occurs in chain the chains of the bacteria it is going in the body so body is forming antibodies these are the antibodies the antibodies are moving in the endocardium in the myocardium and in the pericardium so endocardium myocardium pericardium are due to auto antibodies these are not due to bacteria this is due to auto antibodies so disease occur in endocardium myocardium pericardium let me start let me move ahead so this table you will understand at the end of the lecture at the end of the lecture you will understand it this is a simplified version the most simplified version in the world no one can give you more simple um, than this right so let me start with endocarditis as i have told you we have two type of endocardium at the beginning of the lecture i have told you what are the two type of endocardium we have the valvular endocardium which is present over the walls right the the purple one this is valvular endocardium and we have mural endocardium the red one which is present everywhere else so in the heart everywhere else we have mural endocardium but over walls we have valvular endocardium so endocardium i am dividing in two topics valvular endocardium and mural let me start with valvular endocardium valvular endocardium mein kya hoga let me start can you see the walls can you all see the walls i cannot zoom it you if you can zoom it out zoom it so can you see the heart walls so this is left side this is mitral wall this is right side this is tricuspid wall the two walls can you see the yellow color nodules formed in the walls so on the walls nodules are formed these nodules on the on the leaflet of the walls on the leaflet of the walls are known as vegetations the vegetations are formed in the walls the vegetations are formed these vegetations are again not due to bacteria i am repeating it again and again these are due to auto antibodies auto antibodies are coming and binding with the antigen antigen antibody reaction that is molecular mimicry and cross reactivity give rise to these vegetations so in the walls vegetations are formed give me a thumbs up these vegetations are formed in the walls so walls will not function normally right walls will do abnormal function normally during systole they should open during diastole they should close so in the wall two things can happen due to the vegetations either stenosis stenosis or regurgitation both can happen in the wall because of the vegetation it can result either in stenotic defect or in regurgitation defect i will come on that have you got it so the vegetations what are vegetations these are the nodules on the walls these are also known as verruche vegetations are also known as verruche number one these are small that that is 1 to 3 mm these are multiple these are sterile they don't have bacteria inside them they don't have bacteria so can you see the diagram this diagram can you see a beautiful diagram see the two walls here it is bicuspid wall and see the sorry three walls it is tricuspid and this one it is bicuspid so see the bicuspid and tricuspid wall and see the vegetations on them these these vegetations are small now i will teach you four types of endocarditis today now as i have told you i am going to teach you four types of endocarditis the first it is rheumatic heart disease this is infective this is non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis and this is leibman sac 
See, vegetations are formed in all four walls. The yellow are the vegetations, but the size of all, all of them is different. So in rheumatic heart disease, the vegetations are small. You have to learn. Here it will be large. Here it will be intermediate. So you have to learn the size, the location, right? So here the vegetations are small. They are multiple, small, multiple. And where they are present, I will tell you the location also. I will tell you the location also. Don't worry. Okay. So can you see the real diagram? Can you see these are the vegetations? The diagrams are the from robins. They can come in the form of the IBQs also. They are small. Can you see? Now tell me the ball in which they are present. In heart, we are having four balls. What are the four balls in the heart we all have? So this is left side of the heart. This is right side of the heart. What balls we have? This is left side, say aorta coming out. And right side, say this is pulmonary artery coming out. What four walls we have? On the left side, we have mitral wall, number one, and aortic wall. On the right side, we have tricuspid wall and pulmonary wall. I guess everyone knows this. So, vegetations ka sequence kya? Vegetations formed in which wall? Out of the four wall. The mnemonic of the vegetations is matap. M followed by A followed by T followed by P. Learn matap. So, mitral followed by aortic. So, mitral is first in which most commonly vegetations are formed. Followed by aortic, the second most common. So, vegetations are more common on the left side. Followed by tricuspid and followed by pulmonary. Pulmonary is the least common. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So, the mnemonic is matta. You can see mitral followed by aortic, followed by tricuspid, followed by... Don't learn the percentage. Mitral mate is 37%. Aortic mate 27 So, mnemonic is matta. So, that is the balls, right? So, most common ball in which vegetations are formed is mitral. Second most common is aortic. Least common is pulmonary. Okay. Now, mitral may, if mitral is most commonly involved, as you have said, ma'am, mitral most commonly involved. I agree, mitral involved. So, mitral may regurgitation hoga ki stenosis hoga. Due to vegetations, what, both will happen. But what is more common? Regurgitation or stenosis? So, regurgitation is more common as compared to stenosis. Both will happen. But mitral regurgitation is more common than mitral stenosis due to vegetation again I MCQ. Ye charo previous year questions and various exams. If you don't believe me, don't believe you yourself will find these PYQs in the various papers. <coughs> Give me a thumbs up. So these all are your PYQs. Right. Now let me come on the location of the vegetations. So where the vegetations are present. Okay. I guess you can see my video. See, uh, let me draw a diagram for you. It is difficult. huh? I will try. So see, this is heart. See the left side of the heart. This is left auricle. This is left ventricle. And between the two, these are the two leaflets of mitral wall. Mitral wall is having two leaflets. Bicuspid wall. This is mitral wall. See, <laughs> these are the two leaflets. Imagine, can you see my hands? Let me see in the video if you can see my hands. I guess you can see. Yes. So, these are the two leaflets. So, when auricle is doing systole, the leaflets separate and blood come from auricle to ventricle and again, it will close. So, these are the two leaflets. They open, they close. They open, they close. These are the two leaflets. So, this is the upper surface of the leaflet, the auricular surface. This is the lower surface of the leaflet, the ventricular surface. And this is the junction of the two leaflets. So, where the vegetations are formed? Where the vegetations are formed? On the upper surface? On the lower surface? No. Neither on the upper surface nor on the lower surface. They are formed at the junction of closure. They are formed at the line of the closure. I am drawing for you. See my hand. If you can see, I have drawn the vegetations here. And I have drawn the vegetations here. That is at the junction. So, they are formed like here. Can you see the vegetations? I guess everyone can see. So, these are the vegetations at the line of closure of the two leaflets. These are the two leaflets. Above is the auricle. You can see in the diagram. Above is the auricle and below is the ventricle. And see the, these two leaflets. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So, these are formed. Where they are formed? Along. Now, you got the meaning. Along the line of closure of the leaflets. They are not on auricular surface. So, different type will have different location. I will teach you four endocarditis. Charo mein alag alag hoga. In rheumatic heart disease, it is along the line of closure. Give me a thumbs up. It will be along line of closure. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Right. Now, because of, can you see, because of formation. Okay. Can you see the two leaflets? Let me show you in the diagram. This is one of the leaflet. This is another leaflet. And see, these are the vegetations along the line of closure. And because of which, the wall is looking like a fish mouth. You know, it is like pouting fish mouth. It is looking like a beautiful fish mouth. Either it is known as fish mouth deformity or it is known as button hole. It is looking like a hole of a button. Button hole deformity. So, it is known as, what it is known as? Fish mouth or button hole deformity. Give me a thumbs up. So, see, beautiful diagram. Can you see the one leaflet? Can you see the other leaflet? At the junction, appreciate the vegetations here at the junction. And because of which, this is known as fish mouth or 
button hole everyone give me a thumbs up so fish mouth or button hole right so i am done with the vegetations don't do the microscopy not important so let me tell you the summary of the vegetation so in the endocardium in the endocardium in the valvular endocardium vegetations are formed vegetations are also known as verrucate vegetations are small they are multiple they are sterile they don't have bacteria inside them they are sterile right most common ball is matta mitral followed by aortic followed by tricuspid followed by pulmonary right in mitral wall regurgitation is most common more common than stenosis than stenosis right what is the location at line of junction not upper not lower surface at line of junction line of closure right and one more thing it will lead to fish mouth or button hole deformity so that is the summary of vegetation if anyone have any single doubt please ask me otherwise i am appreciating uh, i want you to appreciate it with the help of your thumbs up give me a thumbs up or appreciate that you got it yes so that is about vegetations and rheumatic heart disease in valvular endocardium let me come on mural mural endocardium mural mein kya hoga what is mural endocardium the remaining red color endocardium to usme kya hoga now in this diagram can you see the walls yes you all can see the two walls so mitral wall and tricuspid wall i have drawn the vegetations on both of them so usually it is more common in uh, mitral but yeah i have drawn in tricuspid also so both the walls are showing vegetations okay so vegetations is in valvular endocardium but what about the remaining endocardium usme kya hoga what will happen to remaining endocardium now remaining endocardium is present in all four chambers we know heart have four chambers so only in one of the chamber mural endocardium is involved the name of the chamber is left auricle so only in left auricle the remaining endocardium is involved so in left auricle just above the mitral wall this is the mitral wall can you see a patch a patch like area is formed this area has become wrinkled this area become less shiny because of antigen antibody reaction it is not due to bacteria everything is due to auto antibodies so because of antigen antibody reaction this area become wrinkled in the left auricle just above the mitral wall on the posterior side this is known as maccallum patch it is the name of the scientist who has discovered it so simply can you see in this diagram maccallum patch so basically maccallum patch is formed in the left auricle in the left auricle just above the mitral wall on the posterior side everyone gave me a thumbs up everyone means everyone so endocarditis is over among the pancarditis endocarditis is over the summary of endocarditis is in front of you in endocarditis and valvular endocardium vegetations are formed in mural endocardium maccallum patch is formed you know you know the details of these the vegetations are small they are multiple they are sterile they are formed at the line of junction closure line of closure the most common wall is matap matp you know the full form and they will cause mitral regurgitation so this is the summary and they cause fish fish uh, mouth or button hole deformity this is the summary of vegetation maccallum patch ki summary kya hai it is formed in left auricle on the posterior side of the you no know, left auricle is a 3d 3d structure anterior posterior superior inferior medial lateral the six walls are there so it is formed on the posterior side left auricle ke posterior side pe just above the mitral wall a patch wrinkled patch is formed this is known as maccallum patch no maccallum patch is not due to regurgitation medicon it is due to antigen antibody reaction everything is happening here is due to antigen antibody reaction the antigen antibody reaction in the mural endocardium leading to wrinkling and loss of shine of a area so that area is known as maccallum patch now coming on myocarditis everyone give me a thumbs up you want me to come on the myocarditis yes so i am coming on myocarditis okay in myocarditis ashkoff bodies are formed what do you mean by ashkoff bodies now okay let's see here this is myocardium now in the endocardium i have shown two things but don't concentrate on that in endocardium there are vegetations in the valvular endocardium and there is maccallum patch in the mural endocardium i have already explained you i don't want to explain you this again i want to explain you myocardium appreciate myocardium can you see black color nodules so nodules are also formed in myocardium entire myocardium have multiple nodules these nodules in the myocardium are known as ashkoff nodules ashkoff nodules now what are these nodules these are granulomas you have you have read granuloma and chronic inflammation how a granuloma is formed granuloma have giant cell the various types of giant cell so this is this will also have a giant cell okay so ashkoff nodule let me show you diagram of one of the ashkoff nodule let me zoom one of the ashkoff nodule okay so can you see this is the ashkoff nodule i have zoomed it for you see the zoomed version of this ashkoff nodule can you see this is an ashkoff nodule i have zoomed it for you there are five cells inside it 
you can zoom the image and see the five cells see the five cells okay i will draw it for you don't worry so at the center you have necrosis this necrosis is fibrinoid necrosis this necrosis is fibrinoid there are five type of necrosis now coagulative necrosis it is not coagulative liquefactive necrosis it is not liquefactive caseous necrosis is present in tb in granulomas are of tb but here the granulomas are there like tb but the necrosis is not caseous it is fibrinoid the fat is not there the fifth one is the fibrinoid so this is fibrinoid necrosis at the center surrounding this five type of cells are there out of the five only two are important let me draw those two cells one of the cells are giant cells these are the giant cells these are known as ashkov cells these are giant cells these are having multiple nucleus the red one these are known as ashkov cells so ashkov cells are giant cells number one learn that the another cells are anti ashkov cells anti ashkov cell let me draw the diagram anti ashkov cell are not giant cells they have one giant cell have multiple nucleus they don't have multiple nucleus they have one nucleus but what is the shape of that nucleus the shape of the nucleus is owl eye owl eye ulluki arm owl eye appearance if you see from the front and if you see the same cell this anti ashkov cell from the side the shape of the nucleus is caterpillar so in some anti ashkov cells you will see owl eye appearance of the nucleus and in some of the anti ashkov cell you will see caterpillar so caterpillar is the front view and owl eye is the side view if i am cutting from here and seeing from the side it is the same owl eye appearance give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so these are the this is anti ashkov cell and this one is ashkov cell ashkov so these are the two type of cells now both of these cells are formed from macrophages these are modified macrophages you know uh, in tb also when granuloma is formed epithelioid cells are formed by modification of the macrophage so macrophage become modified to form ashkov and anti ashkov cells so in the center we have fibrinoid necrosis surrounding this we have ashkov and anti ashkov cells ashkov cells are giant cells anti ashkov cells have either caterpillar shape nucleus or owl eye appearance nucleus it is one one only the view is different transverse view or cross sectional view so the shape of the nucleus is different both these cells ashkov and anti ashkov are modified macrophages right okay surrounding this we have three more types of cells let me tell you surrounding this we have lymphocytes you will see ma'am lymphocytes to hame pata hai everyone knows lymphocytes so these are the lymphocytes the third type of cell the fourth type of cells are plasma cells you all know plasma cells so few plasma cells are also there lymphocytes are also there the fourth and the fifth and the last one the fifth and the last cells are fibroblast the spindle shaped fibroblast are present outermost outermost are the fibroblast so this is a diagram of ashkov nodule so what is ashkov nodule everyone define at the center there is fibrinoid necrosis surrounding it the five cells can you enumerate the five cells okay ashkov cell which are giant cell anti ashkov cell they are not giant cell they have one nucleus but the shape of nucleus is peculiar if you see from the front it is owl eye if you see from the side it is caterpillar so both of these are macrophages so basically ashkov anti ashkov are macrophages lymphocytes plasma cell fibroblast one thing you should notice neutrophils are absent it doesn't have polymer it is an mcq neutrophils are absent here give me a thumbs up so that is ashkov bodies which is present in myocardium give me a thumbs up so these are the granulomas these are made up of central fibrinoid necrosis surrounded by anti ashkov and ashkov cells surrounded by lymphocyte plasma cell and fibroblast it doesn't have neutrophil and polymorphs give me a thumbs up everyone so the same diagram in front of you so ashkov cell are giant cell these are macrophages anti ashkov cell these are also macrophages but they have one nucleus either caterpillar or owl eye see which cell is this i am marking with blue color you tell me see the nucleus and tell me see the nucleus and tell me what are fat write down in the chat box i have marked one of the cell with blue color i am marking with red now this one so it is giant cell na so of course it is ashkov cell it is ashkov cell okay i am marking another cell with green color see see this one it is very small if you can zoom it out you can so it is having caterpillar this one can you see this is caterpillar and can you see this one this is owl eye so both of these are anti ashkov both of these are anti ashkov have you got it so this you can identify the ashkov and anti ashkov in all these diagrams i can provide you the notes if you wish i can provide you the notes it is a youtube lecture but i can provide you the notes on the telegram tag me on the telegram see beautiful diagram everyone see beautiful diagram it is caterpillar it is caterpillar it is caterpillar these all are anti ashkov cells right so we have ashkov the last thing is pericardium so we are done with endocardium 
in the endocardium two things are there in valvular endocardium we have vegetations or verruca in mural endocardium we have maculum patch in myocardium we have ashcock bodies let me finish pericardium what will happen in pericardium okay so this is heart if this is endocardium of the heart the four chambers of the heart okay this is myocardium of the heart and this is pericardium of the heart now there is a space between myocardium and pericardium can you appreciate this space this space is known as pericardial space pericardial space this contains a small amount of fluid in all of us in normal human being in me in you in all of us there is a small amount of fluid this is known as pericardial fluid pericardial fluid is present in pericardial space what is the pericardial space a space between myocardium and pericardium this fluid is watery in consistency right this fluid is very watery in consistency a small amount of fluid is there but whenever the patient the child have rheumatic heart disease in the pericardium this watery fluid converted into thready fluid the threads are there can you see thready 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 fluid this fluid become thready in consistency instead of watery it becomes thready it is known as fibrinous fibrinoid nahi fibrinous pericarditis what does it known as fibrinous pericarditis so in pericardium we have fibrinous pericarditis that is the first thing you should learn what do you mean by fibrinous pericarditis the pericardial space is filled with a thready thready fluid fibrinous so give me a thumbs up if you got the meaning of fibrinous pericarditis now this fibrinous pericarditis gives a very peculiar uh, appearance to the heart let me teach you that is known as bread and butter appearance what do you mean by bread and butter bread and butter what do you mean by have you eaten a sandwich in your breakfast i usually eat bread and i i like the sandwich bread and butter so in the sandwich we have two pieces of the bread and in between the two pieces we have butter so this is butter this is butter right have you ever tried to separate the two pieces of bread from each other in opposite direction have you ever tried if you have not done please try it tomorrow in your breakfast so whenever you have a bread and butter so this is a bread this is a bread and in the center this is butter in a sandwich so if you try to separate the two pieces of bread away from each other you can see the threads of butter in between the thread 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 the butter is like thread 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 they will separate from each other you can imagine the threads of the butter the threads are separating from each other now the child is dead imagine a child who is dead you you see the heart of a child having thready pericarditis imagine this child is dead and i am doing the post mortem of this child so in the post mortem this is the heart i took out this is the heart of the child i took out after taking out what i will do you yourself tell what i will do just a second i will cut the pericardium now so you can see the pericardium the outermost layer pericardium in the outermost layer pericardium appreciate the threads it is it is fibrinous pericarditis the threads so i am cutting the pericardium with a scissor can you see i am cutting the pericardium see this is a scissor i am cutting the pericardium so this one is myocardium in the center and these these are the pericardial flaps i am taking out away with a scissor i am cutting the pericardium separating the myocardium and pericardium can you see this is this is pericardium this is myocardium and if you can appreciate the threads in between if you can appreciate the threads in between so this is looking like bread and butter appearance so myocardium and pericardium are the two breads and in between the fibrinous pericarditis is the butter give me a thumbs up this is known as bread and butter appearance bread and butter in bread and butter who is bread and who is butter who are the two slices of bread one is myocardium one is pericardium and who is the butter butter is the fibrinous pericardial fluid now i cannot simplify more than this give me a thumbs up if done give me a thumbs up if you got it i want a thumbs up so this is the summary in front of you this is the summary in front of you what is the summary in endocardium you have two things in valvular endocardium the vegetation in mural endocardium the maculum patch describe them vegetations are small multiple sterile they are formed at the junction the pneumonic is mutt up most common in mitral wall least common in pulmonary wall in mitral wall it leads to mitral regurgitation and uh, it leads to fish mouth or button hole deformity so that is the summary of vegetation maculum patch is formed in left auricle the posterior side just above the wall right ashcock nodules are formed in myocardium in myocardium ashcock bodies ashcock bodies are formed these are granulomas So what is their diagram? At the center, there is fibrinoid necrosis surrounded by five type of cells. You know the five type of cells. It doesn't have neutrophils. Pericardium. There is fluid in the pericardium. The fluid becomes fibrinous. Fibrinous का मतलब होता है thready, thready. So if you want to separate the pericardium from the myocardium, it will give you bread and butter appearance. This is the summary. Now read the topic from Robbins and Cotron today only. Robbins today today only. You will find it a cakewalk. You will find it a cakewalk.
So I am done with the first endocarditis. First endocarditis, rheumatic heart disease. Give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Uh, okay, give me a minute. Just a second. Okay, so there are few polls for you. Would you like to do that polls? I want everyone to participate in the polls. So this is the first question in front of you. This is the, okay, one more thing. One more thing before coming. So this is the summary. From the summary, there is something in endocardium, myocardium, pericardium. But what is the pathogmatic feature? Pathogmatic feature of rheumatic heart disease is only one that is Eshkov bodies. That is pathognomatic feature. That is specific feature. Pathognomatic feature of the rheumatic heart disease is Eshkov body. Hota sab kuch hai. Lekin most specific is Eshkov body. Learn that. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. This is the first question in front of you. Read the question. Tell me the correct answer in the chat box. I'm saying again, read the question. Tell me the correct answer in the chat box. Fatafat, I don't have time. Fatafat, tell me the answer. So a 10-year-old boy, Papu, is dead of rheumatic fever. Okay. All of the following can be expected at the autopsy except which of the following is not seen in autopsy. So what are the options? Eshkoff nodules. It occurs in rheumatic fever in myocardium. McCallum patch. It occurs in rheumatic fever in mural endocardium. Right. Fibrinous pericarditis, it also occurs in pericardium, but B doesn't occur. Rupture of podiotendinitis doesn't occur. So everyone is right. Uzma, Narendran, Shriyansh, uh, Dr. Priyanka, Pooja, Salvation, Shiv, everyone, everyone is right. Very good. The correct answer is B. This is the next question in front of you. You tell me what are anti Eshkov cells? What are anti Eshkov cells? Very easy question. What are anti Eshkov cells? What are anti Eshkov cells? Are they modified macrophages? Are they modified neutrophils? Are they modified B cells, B lymphocyte or modified RBC? I have told you, na? Yes. Yes. So what is the correct answer? Not B, Krishna Swami. I have told you very specifically, these are modified macrophages. Eshkov cell as well as anti-Eshkov cells. If instead of anti-Eshkov, I am changing the question and asking Eshkov cells. What is your answer now? What is your answer now? Instead of anti-Eshkov, if I am asking Eshkov cells, what is your answer now? Answer is same. It is modified macrophages. So Eshkov as well as anti-Eshkov both are modified macrophages. It is a very important question. Very important. Very important. Right? So correct answer is A. Those who are saying B, you you have you realized your mistake? B is not answer. A is. Right? This is the next question in front of you. Very easy question. Which of the following is not seen in Eshkov body? You know the diagram of Eshkov body? Which of the following is not seen in Eshkov body? You tell me. Which of the following is not seen in Eshkov body? You yourself tell me. Not seen. So, giant cells, are they seen or not seen? Eshkov cells, are they seen or not seen? Fibroblasts, are they seen or not seen? Polymorphonuclear cells means neutrophils. Are they seen or not seen? Yes, you all are right. Neutrophils are absent. So, you know the diagram. At the center, you have fibrinoid necrosis surrounded by five cells. So, Eshkov cells are the giant cells. It is the same option. Giant cells are Eshkov cells only. And you have anti-Eshkov cells, lymphocytes, plasma cells and fibroblasts are the outermost. But you don't have neutrophils. Everyone is right. Very good. Very good. So neutrophils are absent. Neutrophils are absent. Very good. So correct answer here is D. Okay. The next question. Most common ball involved in rheumatic fever. Apply the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic? Most common. The most common ball is? What is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is matap. So what is the most common ball involved? Yes. Yes. So Narendran, Shriyansh. Yes. What about others? So it is written in front of you. Mitral ball. Most common is mitral. Second most common. If I am changing the question and asking you second most question uh, uh, ball. So answer will become aortic. Uh, third most common is tricuspid. And least common or not involved at all is pulmonary. You got it? Yes. Very good. So Rishiraj, Pooja, Priyanka, RR, uh, Bhanu. Everyone is right. Very good. So, okay. The next question. The same question which I have already asked. You already know the answer I guess. Ball which is not involved. Not matlab least common. Tell me the wall which is not involved. Not means least common involved. The wall which is not involved or least common involved. You yourself tell me what is the answer? Yes. So it is pulmonary. Very good. So the mnemonic is matap. Matap is P. So question is asked on mitral also, aortic also, pulmonary also. Question can come on anything. So learn the mnemonic. Next question. Next question. Easy one. Eshkov bodies are seen in. Eshkov bodies are seen in. Rheumatic myocarditis, rheumatic arthritis, Bacterial endocarditis or marantric endocarditis? I guess the most easiest question someone can ask. The most easiest question. Yes, Eshkov bodies are seen in. Which disease? So everyone is right. Of course, it is rheumatic myocarditis and it is the pathognomatic feature. Right? The correct answer is A. Yes, yes. Okay. Next question. McCallum patch is seen in which disease? 
Macallum patch. Currently, this question is very easy for you. I know. But once you complete all your 19 subjects, the complete pathology, now the same question will become difficult for you. So, Macallum patch is seen in infective endocarditis, rheumatic endocarditis, myocardial infarction or TOT, TOF, teratology of palate. So, I guess everyone is right. Now, Macallum patch is seen in rheumatic endocarditis. It is seen in mural endocarditis in the left auricle. Yes, so correct answer is B. Everyone knows. Okay. The next question, characteristic feature in rheumatic carditis. Is it pericarditis which occur or endocarditis or myocarditis or pancarditis? What happens in rheumatic carditis? Rheumatic carditis mein kya hota hai? Endo, myo, peri or pan. What happens in rheumatic carditis? You yourself tell what happens. What happens? You yourself tell the answer. Yes, you all are right. We all know in rheumatic endocarditis, it is the pancarditis which takes place, which includes Endo as well as Mayo as well as Peri. So it includes all. Yes. So correct answer here is D. Yes. Nil, Nil, Bhanu. Everyone is right. Uzma. Very good. Correct answer is pancarditis. Right. The next question. The next question. Most characteristic histological finding of acute rheumatic carditis. Is. So what happens in acute rheumatic endocarditis? Most characteristic finding. Most characteristic means pathognomatic feature. Pathognom. So fibrinous pyrocarditis. Vegetations on the mitral wall. Ashkoff bodies or increased vascularity of the wall. I guess everything happens, but I am asking the most characteristic. Everything happens, but I am asking the pathognomatic feature. Yes, so you all are right. The correct answer will become Ashkoff body. Yes, the correct answer. These all are your PYQs. The next question, exudate and rheumatic fever. What do you mean by exudate? Exudate matlab kya? I am asking about the fluid, pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid ka nature kya hota hai? Is it, is it watery that is serous? Is it purulent that is pus wala? It is thready that is fibrinous or it is miximatous. What does it have? Yes. So you all are right. It becomes thready. Thready means fibrinous. Thready means fibrinous. Yes. The correct answer here is C. Right. So pathognomatic feature of rheumatic fever. Pathognomatic feature. The specific feature. What is the pathognomatic feature? Is it pericarditis, myocarditis, mitral stenosis or Ashcroft nodules? Yes. Yes. Anusha, Bharadwaj, Pooja Mishra. Yes. Very good, Narendra. No, 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 Krishna Swami, not C. Krishna Swami, it will be D, na? I have told you, na? it is D. So, Ashkoff nodules in the myocardium is the pathognomatic feature, right? So, there are many other questions also. The last I, I would like to put here, the last question. Macallum patch is seen in which chamber of the heart? Right auricle, left auricle, right ventricle, left ventricle. Yes? So, Narendra, you are right. What about others? Sundu, you are wrong. Dr. Priyanka, you are right. What about others? Rishinika, you are right. It is left oracle. Yes, it is left oracle. Very good. It is left oracle. Right. So, I am stopping here. I am stopping here but continuing the lecture just after 5 minutes. So, don't go anywhere. I am continuing my next lecture just after 5 minutes. Where? Where? Not on YouTube. It is a free lecture but on Unacademy app. Unacademy learners app. So those who don't have the app, install the app right now from the Play Store. Go to the Play Store, install Unacademy Learners app. Learners app and select the category as Need PG. Select the category as Need PG. After that at 12.30 sharp, after 5 minutes, I am having a live lecture. It is a free lecture. Like YouTube only, you can attend there. So the only thing, instead of YouTube, we are having the free lecture, not on YouTube, but we are having the free lecture on Unacademy Learners app, right? When the lecture is there, on Academy Learners app, just after 5 minutes. Just after 5 minutes at 12.30 p.m. Right, one hour lecture it is. I am continuing CVS. So, first I will finish the endocarditis and then I will come on ischemic heart disease. So, I want everyone to join there in my free class CVS episode number 2. CVS episode number 2, the free class. But you will require a code to join it. So, the code is my surname, Sachdev. S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Sachdev 10 is the code. So, if code is asked, many of you may require the code. Who are the new subscriber? So, please fill the code as Sachdev 10. Note it down somewhere. It is S-A-C-H-D-E-V Sachdev 10. Please note the code and join me there on the Unacademy app. Maybe the link of the lecture is given in the description of this lecture. So, go to the description in the YouTube only right now this lecture. And in that, you will find the link of CVS episode number 2 on the special class. You just click on the link or go on the app. There also, you will find me live. So just give me a break for five minutes and I will join you there. Thank you very much for being with me. There are a few announcements for you as usual for the newcomers that I have to do compulsorily. So thank you very much for being with me and don't forget to give your feedback in the comment box. Next class is just after five minutes, episode number two. 
and uh, neat pg all india mock test is going to happen on 17th april 9 am in the morning on an academy i want everyone to participate in this test it is a free test using the course such they've done an academy light that is test series is already out and you can do the practice uh, those who are mbbs first student they can see the various subscription plans for the first class students is out on an academy on an academy we have two type of subscription on plus you get only an academy on iconic along with an academy you will get prep ladder also so once you take the subscription you will be eligible for all these batches by the topmost educators in the india right these are the various plans in plus in which you will get only an academy these are the various plans in iconic along with an academy we will give you prep ladder also these are the various plans in light we will give you only test series so see the prices see the duration longer the duration cheaper it is go with a longer plan that will be most for, more for, cost effective for you if you apply my code the same code such dev 10 s c h d e v such dev 10 before payment you will get 10% discount on all these plans so please don't forget the code apply it apply it right uh next lecture virology chinmay so my schedule daily i take four hour free classes 9 am in the morning on youtube then 10 am on special class then again 11 15 am on youtube and 12 30 pm on special class so alternate i am having class so first two classes are on virology every day and next two classes on systemic pathology rapid fast revision every day have you got it so every day join me from 9 to 12 30 1 30 every day thank you so four classes remaining today bye bye see you all after 5 minutes